What is up, Miami Dolphin fans? How are you? I'm Josh Katzker at Amplified to Rock on Twitter. And welcome to another episode of The Monologue from DolphinsTalk.com. As I record this on Tuesday night, March 16th, in the year of our Lord 2021, the Dolphins have had what many may call an underwhelming start to free agency. As of yet, there has not been a big flashy signing by our team. The Dolphins have instead opted to make several value-oriented signings, including special teams specialists Ethan Carter, backup quarterback Jacoby uh, Jacoby Brissett, and running back Malcolm Brown. They also signed punter Michael Pilardi. Meanwhile, the New England Patriots are spending like never before, bringing in Nelson Aguilar, Johnny Smith, Hunter Henry, Matthew Judon, and more. And the New York Jets are building up their roster with Corey Davis and Carl Lawson, the latter a guy many Dolphin fans had their eyes on after the Dolphins traded Shaq Lawson to Houston for Bernardrick McKinney. The Buffalo Bills are meanwhile running it back with Matt Milano, John Feliciano, and Daryl Williams, and they've also now brought in Emmanuel Sanders. And to rub just a little bit of salt in the wound, they've also brought in former Dolphins punter Matt Hawk. Now, it's only day two of the NFL's legal tampering period, a phrase that is as absurd as the rules governing it. A lot can and will change. But what is abundantly clear is that the Dolphins, while while planning to be active buyers, will not be making lots of big splashes in the market. And, whoo boy, this is making a lot of Dolphin fans upset. And to be fair, it's understandable. They wanted to see the Dolphins be aggressive and get a few big-name players on both sides of the ball. I I, I get it. As solid as the Dolphins were in 2020 as an all-around team, they weren't stacked with flashy, sexy players or even a lot of pro bowlers. Just just the one, just Xavier Howard. And and fans love the sexy, big-name signings especially when the Dolphins were so strongly linked to guys like Aaron Jones, and especially after they splashed cash left and right at this time last year. They were ready. They were ready for the Dolphins to strike quickly in free agency, not just to continue the rebuild, but to do it in a way that would make for an exciting and dramatic narrative. But if there's one thing that we have learned about Chris Greer and Brian Flores, it's that they have a plan. And it's usually not the plan you think it should or want it to be. This year, which is marked by a global pandemic that resulted in a lower lower salary cap, they've decided to pull back. And there's a number of reasons for this. First and foremost, when it comes to flashly big-name receivers and running backs, the market simply isn't there. I mean, there are a lot of players out there looking for big paydays and fresh starts. Clearly, though, the majority of teams are playing it tight and choosing to be a bit more conservative with their spending, including your Miami Dolphins. Rather than overspending based on past results, which is what the New England Patriots are doing, which is what the New York Jets are doing, the Dolphins are looking for value guys who can give them a great return on a small investment. Brissett and Brown 
great examples of that. Okay, Brissett pays a little bit more expensive than you might want a backup quarterback to be, but he's a guy that is going to be a good, solid backup to Tuatunga Vailoa, and if he needs to go on to the field, he's going to give you very competent play. He's, he's going to be a lot more competent out there than Reed Sennett. Yeah. The second reason the Dolphins are playing it slow is that just in case you've forgotten, they have four of the first 50 picks in the NFL draft this year. A draft with a class that is positively stacked with skill position guys. Guys like Kyle Pitch, Jamar Chase, Jalen Waddle, Devontae Smith. Najee Harris, Travis Etienne, Javante Williams, just to name some of the top-line talent. And folks, rookie deals, even for top 50 elite draft talent, those rookie deals are a lot less expensive than bloated free agent contracts. Now, that's not to say the Dolphins aren't going to pick up a a veteran or two out there. I'm sure they're going to. But you don't necessarily have to go out there and make the big splashy signing when you've got the kind of draft capital that the Dolphins have. Now, and again, I'll remind you, there's still a lot of time left for the Dolphins to make some big moves and bring in a bigger name or two. Maybe they'll make a trade. Who knows? Heck, we might even add draft picks for this year. That's, I'm not talking to you right now, Siri. I'm, I'm talking to the, to the people out here. Sorry about that, everybody. Yeah, Dolphins might trade back. They could do a trade back with Philadelphia or, or, or Carolina and add draft capital to this year. So this is the point I'm making here is that you shouldn't confuse your own disappointment about how slow things have been in these first couple of days with the idea that things aren't going well. Because the Dolphins have taken a smart, measured approach since the day that Chris Greer and Brian Flores took the helm, and that is continuing right now. Right, The organization has made plenty, plenty of missteps in the last couple of decades, but I don't see any of this offseason's transactions or lack thereof in that way. At least not yet. Now, the Dolphins get through free agency and the draft, and Devontae Parker and Preston Williams remain your top two receivers, and there isn't a promising rookie running back on the roster? Well, that would be a very, very different story. We'll check back in on that again in August. Finally, one last thing. I wanted to make this a quick episode tonight. So one last little thing. There's a lot of negativity in this Miami Dolphins fan base. If you're on social media, you've seen it. And listen, I get it to a certain extent. Um... Some of us have been cheering for this team for decades and have never seen a Super Bowl win. It's been nearly 40 years since the last time we've even played in a Super Bowl. We've seen boneheaded GMs and coaches, terrible players, and we've been on a desperate, desperate search for a franchise quarterback for over 20 years. We got a bittersweet reminder of that this week, of of, of how close we were to bringing in Drew Brees, to have him be that franchise guy, only to have team doctors refuse to clear him when Nick Saban and the rest of the front office had a five-year, 50 million contract in the barrel ready to go, and the team doctors said no. So we got a reminder this week of how long it's been that we've been on that journey for a franchise quarterback. Instead, we ended up with Dante Culpepper, and well, you know how it, you know how that went. Anyway, we've been through some garbage together, so I understand cynicism when it comes to this team. The name of the podcast that I do with my brother is the same old Dolphin Show. 
Okay? I get it. I get the cynicism. But I also know that for me, being a sports fan is about hope. It is about finding joy even when everything is looking awful. It's about entertainment. And it's ultimately, it's about fun. For those of you uh, who are watching this video who don't know, um, in, a different, in, in addition to being a huge Miami Dolphins fan, I am a lifelong fan of the Chicago Cubs who grew up in South Florida in the days before the Miami Marlins or the Florida Marlins as they were initially. Uh, when I was growing up, we had the Braves, Mets, Yankees, and Cubs games on TV. And I used to watch the Cubs on WGN and listen to Harry Carey call games for some absolutely miserable Chicago Cubs teams. But I, I loved Harry Carey. And as a result, I, I just got, grew an attachment, not just to Harry Carey and Steve Stone, who was calling the games with him, but I grew such an attachment to that team that in 1993, when the Marlins, the, the Florida Marlins, had their inaugural baseball season, I refused to be a Marlins fan. Sure, I went to games. My, my parents had season tickets. Uh, the Brain and I, we went to the games. And I cheered for the Marlins at those games, but I was a Cubs fan. So when the Cubs came to town, everybody else was in their Marlins gear. I was walking into Joe Robbie Stadium or Pro Player Park or whatever the heck it was called at the time with my Chicago Cubs jersey my blue hat with a red C. And listen, the Cubs sucked and sucked and sucked for years. And then suddenly they were good. And they got so close to a World Series only to be defeated in heartbreaking fashion. And then, soon after, they sucked again. But even through all of that frustration and heartbreak, I kept hope alive. And I found joy, even through excruciatingly painful 162-game baseball seasons. And then, in 2016, I had the greatest experience of my sporting life when the Chicago Cubs finally won the World Series. I cried, sobbed like a baby. If you can find it, the show I was doing with my brother at the time was the Brothers of Destruction podcast, and, and we did an episode of the show after the Cubs won the World Series. I was very emotional about it. The payoff to that World Series victory was greater than I could ever possibly describe. And now, I'm waiting, sometimes patiently, sometimes not so patiently, for the Dolphins to find that same glory. And while... It has been frustrating at times, and I have had my complaints. Trust me, I have had my complaints, and I am not one to be quiet when I get upset. I have continued to look for some joy, some fun, in my Miami Dolphins fandom. So, for all of you Miami Dolphin fans out there who are frustrated and angry in your disappointment, I encourage you to look for your joy. Find the fun in cheering on your team. Even when things are hard, even when we haven't won a playoff game in over 20 years, even if your expectations are not met. And I'm not saying you have to be happy about everything. That's not realistic. You don't need to be blindly faithful to the point of delusion. Okay? But come on. Find some happiness here. Right? They won 10 games in their second year of the rebuild. Yeah, they didn't get they didn't make the playoffs. 
they didn't win a playoff game. They didn't go to they, they didn't get a trophy or anything. But but come on. The least you can do in your frustration and you're angry, don't come after people on the internet for being optimistic and for choosing to look on the bright side and to to look at where things are with this team and be happy. Don't don't come after people for that. I mean, things are looking better right now than they have for this organization in in a long time. So just relax. Have some fun. And if you can't find some happiness in these Dolphins, in this Miami Dolphins team, in, in what they're doing right now, then, man, I sure hope that you can find joy somewhere else. Thanks for listening and watching, everybody. Uh, Make sure to head over to DolphinsTalk.com every day for all the latest Miami Dolphins news and information and a bunch of great podcasts as news eventually starts to break this week. We're going to have some more podcasts. I'm pretty sure Mike and Ian are going to be putting together a St. Patrick's Day episode of the DolphinsTalk.com podcast for you. Uh, I'm planning to be back with Aaron the Brain for a Samuel Dolphins show on Friday. So head on over to DolphinsTalk.com each and every day. Make sure you're subscribed to the Dolphins Talk podcast on Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, anywhere you can get your podcast. And don't forget that you can also get 20% off of your order and free shipping at Manscaped.com if you use the promo code Dolphins Talk. That's 20% off your order and free shipping at Manscaped.com. With the promo code Dolphins Talk, I encourage all of the fellas out there to head over to Manscaped and check out all their men's grooming products. I can tell you from experience, it is really great stuff. I'm telling you, it works. All right, I'm out of here. Going to go stare at my phone and see what the Dolphins do next. So, bye-bye, everybody. Go Dolphins!